It's time for Newton's third law today. And this is one that actually has sort of uh, has been converted into a colloquial phrase uh, that you might have heard before. Sort of uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You might have heard that somewhere before. For every action, an equal and opposite reaction. That comes from Newton's third law, which, like all of Newton's laws, involves forces. Now remember, force is a new idea this chapter. It's a vector. Our units are Newtons, right? And you can think of a force as a push or a pull, okay? Um, sometimes, sometimes it's a little less obvious than that, but that's sort of in the simplest possible way of thinking about it. A force is a push or a pull. Now, for Newton's third law, I'm just going to write it out in words. This one is kind of like the first law in that there's really not a really good mathematical crystallization of it, like sigma f equals ma, you know, the vector equation that summarizes Newton's second law. There's nothing like that for Newton's third law. So I'm just going to write it down here for you. And here we go. Here it is in all its glory. If object one, whatever that happens to be, exerts a force F, the vector, the little vector sign up there, right? Force is a vector. So if object one exerts a force F on object two, comma, then object two exerts a force minus F1. Remember that when you put a minus sign in front of a vector, that means it has the same magnitude but it's the opposite direction. So if I step this way, my displacement is about four feet this direction. The opposite displacement is four feet in the opposite direction. Same magnitude opposite direction. So, object 2 exerts a force minus F1, same magnitude, opposite direction, on object 1. Full stop. That's it. That is Newton's third law in all its glory. Now, um, please note that this is really general. Any time an object exerts a force on another object, there's an equal and opposite force. For example, suppose you've got a cup uh, sitting in a saucer. Okay, so there's the cup and there's the saucer. There's a force of the cup of the cup on the saucer down, right? The, the, the weight of the cup is felt by the saucer, but there's an equal and opposite force on the cup by the saucer. Force on the on the uh, force of the saucer on the cup. So the force experienced by the saucer is equal and opposite to the force experienced by the cup. Suppose you're pushing a big box across the floor. Okay. So there's a box and here's you pushing it across the floor. You are exerting a force on the box. Force of you on the box. There's an equal and opposite force of the box on you. Now that doesn't mean nobody's moving. These forces act on different bodies, okay? But I push against the wall. There's a wall here. There's a wall here. The wall pushes back on me. I stand on the floor. I exert a force down on the floor due to my weight. It exerts an equal and opposite force upon me. If you take a, I don't know if you've ever shot a rifle before, but you take a rifle, right, and you shoot it, if it's, particularly if it's a larger caliber rifle, uh, 
The bullet, of course, feels a force. There's a force of the bull of the rifle on the bullet. Okay. There's a force. Uh, force of the rifle on the bullet, but there's also a force back of the of the bullet on the rifle. It's known as a it's kick, right? The, a, a larger caliber rifle will kick. You need to hold, hold it firmly to your shoulder if you ever fire it. Okay. Equal and opposite forces. Finally, sort of a whimsical uh, picture here. Suppose uh, here's the planet Earth in all of its glory. Suppose you climb a super high diving board and you jump off and you fall for a while. There is obviously a force of the earth on you. But there is an equal and opposite force of you on the earth. The earth gets pulled towards you as you fall towards it. Now, Turns out the motion of the Earth towards you is far less than the motion of you towards the Earth. I mean, the motion of the Earth up towards you is far less than the motion than the, than the motion of you towards the Earth. That's because the masses are so different. Your mass and the mass of the Earth are so different. Okay, but all forces come in pairs. And one thing you need to notice about all of these Newton's third law of forces is that they act. They, are, they come in pairs, okay? Newton's third law of pairs, we call them. They act on different bodies. Okay, how do I have it worded here? Uh, third law forces act on different bodies, right? The cup acts on the saucer, the saucer acts on the cup. Okay, both these, these two forces, the force of the saucer on the cup and the force of the cup on the saucer act on different bodies. In the case of you pushing a box across the floor, the force of you on the box acts on the box. The force of the box on you acts on you. They act on different bodies. The bullet and the rifle are different bodies. Okay, the force of the rifle on the bullet, the force of the bullet on the rifle. They act on different bodies, and of course you and the earth are separate objects here. But that's one thing that's always tricky with third law, when you think of third law pairs like this, third law forces, and actually, I mean, a third law force is not a special kind of force. I'm not trying to say that there's a special kind of force known as a third law force. Every force in nature is a third law force. But when you're considering applying the third law, you need to think in pairs and you need to remember that they act on different bodies. So let's say that we're out canoeing. And there's two canoes. There's one. There's the other. One of them's got a couple people in it. One of them's got more people in it, say four people in it. Okay, so the so the mass of the first one, let me see my numbers here, is 150 kilograms and the mass of the other is 250 kilograms. And then somebody reaches out from one of the boats and pushes on the nose of the other. So the two canoes are nose to nose. And somebody, say this person here, is going to reach out, okay, going to lean over and push on the other one. To get it away. We're going to separate each other, okay? There's not five people all of a sudden. This person here. Moving, okay, so pushing out. And that person is going to apply a force of, what is it, um, 46 Newtons. So, we have canoe one, let's get these numbers here. We have canoe one, we have canoe two. So the person in canoe two exerts a force of 46 Newtons 
pushing away slowly on canoe number one. Okay. Well, when the person pushes on canoe number one, Okay, and, and think of, I should say, we have our two objects here, these 150 kilograms here and 250 there, that includes the canoes and everybody in them. Okay, that's the canoe and everybody inside. So we're treating canoe one and its occupants as one object and we're treating canoe two and its occupants as a second object. And so when canoe two pushes back on canoe one with, 40, with a force of 46 newtons, there must be an equal and opposite force of 46 newtons in the opposite direction. So if this direction is what we call positive, then the force applied is going to be negative because the person in canoe two is pushing that way against canoe one in the negative x direction. Okay, so their accelerations will be different. We can find, we can show that their accelerations will be different, right? Sum of the forces, the x direction is m a x. Newton's second law, right there. Boom! Newton's second law applied in the x direction. Okay, but we're not going to worry about the force of the water, so uh, let's say this is going to be the force on canoe one. Canoe one. The sum of the forces is going to be minus 46 newtons. That's the force of canoe two on canoe one. Right, the dude doing the pushing here is pushing in the negative x direction. Negative 46 newtons. That's going to equal 150 kilograms, which is the mass of canoe one times the acceleration of canoe one. So this is the sum of forces in the x direction on canoe one. This is the mass of canoe one. This is the acceleration of canoe one. And when you do this, you'll find the acceleration of canoe one, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da bop bop, let's see, is gonna be negative zero, wait, Negative 0 0.307, negative 0 0.307 meters per second squared. So, canoe one accelerates that way. There's only one x force, and that's why we only had one term here when we applied Newton's second law, right? All the x forces was that single force applied by uh, dude in canoe two. We can play the same game for canoe two and find out what its acceleration is. I keep writing canoe with an O. Canoe two. Its sum of X forces is going to be that way. This force here is on canoe two. That's the second, law, third law pair. We have a pair of forces. Dude in canoe two pushes on canoe one that way with 46 newtons. Canoe one will push back on canoe two that way with 46 newtons, and that way is positive. So 46 newtons for canoe two is 250. We're again just applying Newton's second law times A2. Acceleration two will have a smaller magnitude because it's a more massive object. And we get zero point, uh, no, we get zero point one eight four. So notice, it's important, notice that even though the forces are equal and opposite, the accelerations are not equal and opposite. They are opposite. Okay. You hear that train? Wow, that's loud. I can hear it really well. I don't know if you can or not. Um, so the forces are equal and opposite. Newton's third law, forces are equal and opposite. 46 Newtons to the left in the negative x direction, 46 Newtons to the right. But the accelerations produced by those forces are not equal. Why? Not equal and opposite, I should say. Why are they not equal and opposite? Why do they not have equal magnitudes? 0.307, 0.184, 
it's because the masses of the two canoes are different. The larger canoe will have the smaller acceleration, according to Newton's second law. Okay. So uh, to further demonstrate how Newton's third law works, we're going to spend the next video doing an example, a more uh, detailed example than this one about how Newton's third law pairs work. So check it out.